Dr. Parker A. Grant, founder of ID Lance, and um, we have a member showcase. We're going to just ask you a bunch of questions about who you are, your background. And, but really, I wanted to start out with just asking you questions about ID Lance. Like, um, what is it? What is ID Lance? Yeah. So, ID Lance is really an LD agency. Uh, we take freelance talent, we have members who are freelancers. And uh, in particular, the freelancers are folks that are interested in leaving their former life, you know, whether they're a teacher or a professor or somebody working in corporate and just wanting to make that leap into a new world of um, freelancing, whether it's part time or full time. But um, so we try to match the talent from this pool of freelancers to opportunities. So there are companies that are, you know, they're increasingly used, uh, using freelancers just because of, um, you know, the variation of the market. And, you know, so we find opportunities and try to match them. So it's kind of a win-win, you know, we, yeah. we get lots of talent from all around the country. And, um, you know, we have clients who are willing to, you know, sign on with us on different projects and, we're just kind of thrilled to be able to be so-called matchmakers. So, oh, that's great. But yeah, that's what we do. So, if if somebody joins ID Lands, what can they expect? If if somebody what joins ID Lands, no, joins ID Lands, joins the community, what, what what can they expect to see from from? Yeah, from so the they'll expect to see uh, other like-minded folks uh, in the same uh, transition process. Now, there are some people who are still working full time and they're just sort of getting their feet wet, kind of, you know, find out what it's like to be a freelancer mm -hmm. before they make that decision. Cause it's a life decision. And you think about it is it's major, you know? Mm -hmm. So when you're leaving a, a uh, an organization where you're getting that consistent paycheck and then you're going into another world where that pay is going to be variable. Yeah, it comes at different times. So, you know, there are there are some emotions that come with that transition, and being in a community allows you to express those in forms of whether it's venting or just asking questions. How do I do this? Because everybody's at a different stage, right? So, those that are further along could help those that are just kind of beginning the transition. Um, I started my career in freelancing back about 14 years ago. Mm -hmm. Prior to that, um, I worked in a company that was a Fortune 50 company for about 21 years. Mm -hmm. So as of this year, I've been in learning development for about 30 years total. Wow. Mm -hmm. So I've been in it for a while. I've seen a lot. Um, but I also know what it feels like. To go from something that is seems very stable, secure, to something like what's around the corner, you know. So it's it's quite a transition. But I I found that the further in my freelancing career, the more safe that I felt. That that security actually increased mm. to the point where you know that you've got some client work coming in. And so if there's ever, uh, let's say, a recession or a downturn in the market, whatever, uh, you know, you have that comfort of knowing that you've got income coming in. Mm -hmm. Even if you lose a client or, or two, mm -hmm. so you still have some income coming in. Mm -hmm. Whereas in a full-time position, that's not always the case, you know, depending on where you are. You, you know, sometimes companies have to make drastic cuts just because, you know, they have to. Um, right. And, you know, people are uh, unfortunately victims of of, of uh, restructures. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. anyway, um, but yeah, so, uh, you know, when somebody comes into ID Lance, they can expect to communicate with others that have been through that or or uh, if they have been in it themselves, they can help others. So, yeah, yeah, that's great. We, we use Slack for that. Slack right. is great. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. In fact, with the um, tldchat.us is where our Slack group is. And right before you started, I saw freelance 
job posting pop up. I'm like, oh, there you go. Look at that. Um, so, um, yeah, I mean, it, it's super interesting. Now, let's go back to 30 years ago when you first started into this space, which means that pretty much you weren't doing any training over the internet. You were probably, I mean, were you even using CDs and stuff back then? Uh, we, we, we weren't even using PowerPoint. Right. We had overhead slides. <laughs> right, you know, right. Little big boxes that you put on there with a shiny projector light, big screen. Yes. Yes. Yeah. No, that's a long time ago. I yeah, yeah. It's hard not to want to go back and get nostalgic about those days because I was kind of at the tail end of tail end I of, had my, of that. Uh, colorful markers with me. I had red, blue, green, black, and different colors. So I could right. doodle on them. <laughs> so why, why, why did you get into training? What was um what was that journey like? Well, um it's it, this is kind of a weird thing. Um, but I actually started out as a mechanical engineer, believe it or not. So mm. Prior to my LMD, I had five years of mechanical engineering design experience working for a jet engine company. And um, <laughs> yeah, so I go through undergrad and grad school for mechanical engineering and only five years into my career, I make a switch. Go wow. figure. Wow. So I joke around with people that I am a fully recovered engineer. So, Parker, so, wait, did, did you not like engineering or what, what was the... What I was, was liked it. I, I just didn't see that for another 30, 40 years. Mm. I liked it, though. Uh, a lot of great problem-solving skills that you get to pick up. And, you know, so a lot of it, you know, for all of you uh, who are watching, you know the problem-solving process, right, for instructional design. So think of it like... Um, where when I was an engineer, I was problem solving for parts of products where IDs can problem solve for people. So it's a lot of a similar methodology, but it's just two different um, worlds. But, um, but to answer your question about how did I get interested in this, um, I had a buddy of mine at, uh, at the company where I worked. He asked me, hey, uh, Parker, do you want to join me on you know, teaching a class to high school students, juniors and seniors um, from the local area. Mm -hmm. And I'm here in the Hartford, Connecticut area. And I said, yeah, well, tell me more about this. And, they, and he said, well, these guys are looking for um, some preview of what engineering is like so that they can decide whether to apply for engineering college. You know, so um, I said, yeah, why not? So my buddy, Sean, and I, Every Wednesday night, we had a group of maybe a dozen kids from the local school. They were bussed over to the company where we worked. Mm -hmm. And we bring them in our conference room, let's say, 5 o'clock in the afternoon, spend a couple yeah. hours with them. We did it for several weeks in a row. And I just fell in love with this idea of training. It, it was just like you see these kids, mm -hmm. like light bulbs go on. Mm -hmm. They get so excited about the possibilities. And that's what got me thinking, wait a minute, I, I love teaching, I love training. How can I do that in the company that I'm working at? Because I've got all the benefits, you know, we've got healthcare benefits, yeah. good pay and all that, you know, why leave? So I just figured I'd try to do a lateral move into another department. So I started investigating and this is a large company of like 38,000 people. So found out they had a training department and uh, talked to one of the instructors and just some how I just worked into that department through application process from that day on 30 years ago. Okay. So it is this year, 30 years ago that I um, got into training. Um, no regrets. It was the best decision ever. Yeah. Uh, so it was really cool. That's how I started. That's great. No, that's really amazing to hear. I, I, I love thinking about that. I mean, cause recently I've been thinking about, you know, what are the reasons that people shouldn't get into instructional design or, um, you know, being learning experience designers, anything like that. But consistently, the reason why it seems like it's just inherent in people's, you know, core that if they want to be educators, that just really, really speaks to them, you know, because it seems like being a mechanical engineer probably would have been a lot more lucrative than being a trainer. And so you you had to make that decision too, right? 
oddly, I didn't have to take a pay cut. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I was able to keep the pay uh -huh. and then just continue to get raises from there. But I also went up the ranks, too. Uh, so after being a technical trainer, actually, I was a trainer for engineers, too, which was kind of cool because uh, the, the company I worked for, uh, it was a jet engine company. So I got to teach power plant engineers at, at major airlines uh, from around the world uh, how to analyze data from the, uh, the cockpit in commercial aircraft. Um, and so, uh, so I was able to keep the engineering side of things for a while, but I also was able to learn instructional design of the job. I also did some development work, which mm -hmm. started out with PowerPoint. Yeah. And then we got into the CBT world, right? Computer-based mm -hmm. training, where we got to publish stuff on CDs. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, eventually that went to WBT. Mm -hmm. if you remember that acronym. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, uh, things evolved from there to e-learning over time. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so I went up to the ranks. I became a uh, training manager. Uh, prior to that, though, I was able to travel the world to different countries to, you know, teach at different airlines, which is really kind of a cool experience in itself to be able to, you know, learn what it's like to teach in different cultures. Right. You know, certain things that you do or you don't do in the classroom. And uh, so I became a training manager and eventually became a learning development manager overseeing a division of 7,000 people. So I was able to really get a broad spectrum of experiences in the corporate world. Um, that said, uh, that probably enabled me to work with corporate clients easier because corporate is corporate. I don't know. Any of you viewers out there know what I mean by by that, but it's it's a it's a culture thing. You have to kind of communicate and talk. Uh, the I took, um, and here I am. Um, wow! Then, and uh, so, freelance. can you um can you go into like when did you decide to do the freelancing things it sounded like you had a really success well it sounded like it was really successful in your corporate life and but where where when did the freelancing stuff begin yeah the freelancing didn't happen right away i mm -hmm. wanted to have a business i was sort of having that entrepreneurial itch like there was so much you know stuff going on in corporate it's just you know, a lot of bs basically what it is and you get tired of people not being themselves see i had lunch buddies that i knew back in the late 80s mm -hmm. and i saw them progress through the company and they became individuals who tried to be other uh other than themselves so you kind of know the true uh personalities but they put on a different front and mm -hmm. just a lot of politics going on. And I'm trying to think, you know, is this something how I really want to spend my life? Can I just be in a role where I could just be me? You know, so, um, and I thought for several years, you know, how do I get on my own? How do I uh, start a business? You know, what can I do as an entrepreneur? Um, ID wasn't one of the things I wanted to do. It was, I wanted to, to get into like um, coming up with software that was better for change management in an organization. It's like the OD stuff, organizational development, change management. I got into facilitation. So helping uh, facilitate meetings, root cause analysis sessions, you know, all of that stuff. And I thought, you know, that would command a good price. I can make a good living on that. But the truth was, it was hard, really, really hard to do that. And I'm thinking, okay, what can I do that will at least, you know, bring in a little bit more money? Um, and I thought about instructional design because I saw a lot of people doing that. And I thought, well, okay, maybe not the thing that I want to do, but I'll try it. So I got into it and... Um, 
And I started with a small project with a small company, probably about a half hour for me. And it happened to be, their client happened to be the corporation that I left. <laughs> so that that was a nice, um, I, I guess, entry into ID work is, you know, something that I'm very familiar with, right? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so when I started doing that, then when I was partway through the first project, I got offered another project. Oh, we have this other one. So they liked my work, right? So they offered another one ready to start as soon as I finished this one. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, this is uh, not too bad. I could I think I can keep doing this. So, you know, uh, I started, you know, poking around with other people that I knew in my network, say, hey, yeah, um, you know, I'm Parker Grant. I, um, you know, I can do instructional design work and I'm doing something for this company right here. Just let me know if you need some help. Yeah. So just little by little, just bring it in. And I found that, okay, this is, this is the place. So, yeah. Oh, that's amazing. And so how long have you been just doing this freelance stuff? Yeah. So, uh, 2007, 2008, I think when I started that, wow. um, so I still do uh, freelance work, even though I'm a co-founder of Heidi Lance with Andrea Macanini, I still do some freelance work. Uh, I probably try to spend um, maybe 20 to 40% of my time doing some of that. I, mm -hmm. I just like to get my hands dirty and stuff like that, you know, sure. just kind of keep up to date with what's going on. Mm -hmm. And uh, the remainder of my time, uh, I try to, um, you know, help grow ID Lance. So. Definitely a full plate. No, yeah, absolutely. And so when did I ID Land start? So we started uh, the business as an entity in uh, February of 2020. So just a little over two years. Mm -hmm. um, Andrea and I met on a project a few months prior to that. And so uh, we hit it off with the combination of talents between Andrea and, and mine. So we're like complementary talents, which made it great. So, you know, between her network and my network, we were able to put together a uh, curriculum to help people make that transition to freelancing. And um, so that was how we started. We're just to kind of get a membership fee out there to get people to learn how to uh, make that bold leap to freelancing. Yeah, but it, it just grew. It morphed over time. So now we're really kind of a, like an agency. So we've landed yeah. some big contracts. Um, I mean, this year alone, we we're poised to grow about seven hundred percent over mm -hmm. last year's. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's, that's amazing. It's doing really well. Yeah. So why but, yeah. why did you start ID Lance? Well, um, it was one of those where uh, I don't know. Maybe it was just a feeling that like just kind of want to pay back, right? Mm. I've been in this so long, mm -hmm. years, you know, it's like you get to a phase in life where you think, okay, this is time to pay back. Just give others a chance, especially the younger ones who are making that decision early in their life. You know, um, they don't have to work 20 years, 30 years in a corporation before they have to go on as a consultant. Yeah, They can start right from college if they want. Mm -hmm. So, but, you know, uh, because I've seen a lot in many different aspects of L and D, you know, I felt very comfortable with being able to, you know, put together a curriculum and, uh, help others to, you know, make that move. Wow. Okay. So as far as your instructional design career and just being a trainer, sort of looking back, is there anything that, you know, now that you wish you could have told yourself right when you started? Oh, as a trainer, uh, anything in particular? As a um, trainer. And then I'd also ask that about you being a founder of ID Lance, if you can go back to 2020 and, and, and ask and, and tell yourself something, what would that be? So both questions. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, that's a really, really thought provoking question. Um, if I were to travel back in time and meet my younger self, what would I say? Right. Uh, start ID work faster. <laughs> um, I was exploring in the beginning. I was 
kind of uh, hemming and hawing and trying to figure out, okay, should I do facilitation work? Should I do change management? Should I go for the high intellect think tank kind of stuff or just go for like creative work um, and just try, you know, uh, uh, you know, doing some basic instructional design. So uh, if I were to go back, I would say, you know, Parker, uh, no, just jump right in ID. You know, there's a lot of businesses out there that are looking for this help. You know, don't waste your time. There's a market for that. And also, uh, I would also say this too. <clears throat> Find out who you are as a person, what you love to do and what you're good at. Because when you think about the, the spectrum of L&D, it is huge, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you think about all the aspects of learning development, ranging from, you know, um, just the technology of LMS alone. I mean, there are hundreds and hundreds of learning management systems out there and yeah, you need yeah. people who administrate that kind of thing. Yeah. You have um, technical writers who specialize in technical writing. You know, you have those who are really good at explainer videos mm -hmm. using Beyond or whatever. Um, you have those who are a natural trainer in the classroom because of their personality, you know, and the, the ability to engage students. And yeah. so there's a whole range of, of, of opportunities in L&D. Um, so, yeah, uh, there's, there, there's, there's so much there that you would want to take some time up front to say, okay, what is it in L&D that I really, really want to do? Do I want to get into the writing aspects or do I want to get into some more of that creative stuff like making videos, animations, or even custom graphics for e-learning backgrounds, or whatever, mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. just writing, you know, code. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you can just say, um, you know, this is what I'd love to do. This is what I'm really good at. Kind of narrow in that. And then just go for it. YOLO, right? You only right. live one. Just go for it. You know, Parker, that is like such important. I mean, just great advice to be able to tell people that because I don't think I've been in this space, you know, only half as long as you've been, which is still a long time, 15 years. But then I, I don't know how many times I've had entry level instructional designers like say things that like they're really frustrated because they can't figure out storyline. It's like, well, you don't have to know storyline to be an instructional designer. There are just so many different pockets to this space that you can jump in. I know folks that are just that specifically work in Word as instructional designers and are just, you know, writers, you know, and, and so you don't have to know all of this stuff to be a successful L&D professional. You, you can actually like pick what you're good at and, yeah. Yeah. And do you get to tell people this, like in your community in ID Lance? Is that something that you can, that you can? I try to share once in a while, uh, yeah. you know, those uh, tips. Uh, I've had uh, a few members of ID Lance private message me in Slack mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. say, hey, Parker, what do you think? Should I do this? You know, just getting some guidance and uh, I'll spend a little bit of time. You know, yeah. sometimes we'll hop on a Zoom call and just go through some tweaks. Uh, I love doing that stuff. Yeah. You know, it is, it's so satisfying to know that you can help make a difference in the trajectory of that person's life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, a, it's a life decision, right? Yeah. So, you know, um, I know some, you know, freelancers, they, they, they do it for a while that they really get nervous and they revert back to full time. Mm -hmm that sense of uh, security, like I need to get back to a full-time job. I don't know if I can take it, which is fine. You know, I mean, you, you don't feel like this is the right time. Mm -hmm. You go back to the full-time job. Yeah. But, you know, sometimes, you know, it's just a little encouragement, a little tweak in the direction can really help set that person off to a, a really uh, prosperous path. So, yeah. Okay, so now how about as a founder, as as um, a co-founder of ID Lance? It's been a couple of years now. Anything you know now that you would you would change? 
Yeah, I think uh, I'm learning new platforms that I wish I had started out with. Um, when when Andrea and I began, I, so we started writing curriculum on Word documents. Um, and actually we use, I think we use OneNote. So we're just collecting all this content and we're putting stuff together and we were formulating the, the curriculum and we eventually put it into Word. But then we were trying to figure out, all right, how do we deliver this so that you know people just pay a membership fee and then join and get the curriculum? And uh, you've heard of Learn Dash, right? Mm -hmm. It's a WordPress platform. Mm -hmm. So, you know, being a startup, we, we were thinking, okay, we have to keep our costs down. So we don't want to put a whole bucket load of money into this and keep our costs down. So we started out with WordPress and the Learn Dash plugin. So we we're all excited. This is going to be really, really cool. I don't know how many out there watching it are thinking, I do nuts because if you are saying that, you're right. Uh, WordPress is horrible when when it comes to using plugin because what happens? Like we we put in um, we we put in Learn Dash and, and Learn Dash has other elements like social. Uh, what is it called? It um, the the Buddy Press, which yeah, is another Buddy Press, social yeah. community piece. Yeah. So you put that in and then you put in some other plugins. Pretty soon you, you have like 10 or 12 different plugins. And that's just a recipe for nuclear war. I mean, it right. is it is like we basically had our site shut down because everything was not working. Because every yeah. time they had updates to plugin, it would just blow up the system. So Andrea and I, uh, we luckily we made a transition to a different system, um, and that was uh, Thinkific, and so that's what we're running off right now, um, which is uh, stable, which is which is a good thing. But we're finding that that there are some limitations with that, and so we are looking at another platform, um, uh, you know, for the next few months that will help take it to another level, which includes all the marketing aspects of it. So it's really like big that is coming this year yeah it's um gosh i can't even tell you uh, this oh, this this is almost feels like it could be a whole different broadcast but i've been through all that yeah. wordpress terrible like i you know and i've built like literally probably a hundred wordpress sites but when I started this with um, TLDC, it was like, no thanks. Um, you know, this yeah. is not working. The, the smallest thing would just crash everything and and all that. Not that WordPress for like just a static site that if you have a restaurant or something works great, you know. But if you're going to add Learn Dash as a plugin, you better be ready for. Um, well, you, you probably need to hire a couple people to just keep an eye on it. Every oh, day. yeah, we had to hire a, um, a, uh, a, a WordPress specialist. Yeah. Um, yeah, and it was just it was nuts. Um, yeah, yeah. It's just I mean, just one additional plugin would change the fonts or something on your home page. It yeah. had nothing to do with each other. Yeah, it's like how could that happen anyway? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, it's true. Like Farhan is saying, so glad to hear I'm not the only one who abandoned WordPress. <laughs> I moved over to Webflow, which is a uh, no code um, yeah. system that I absolutely love. Webflow is so great. I never have to worry about anything. Yeah, I have to pay a little bit more. Yeah, Webflow is nice. I don't know, Parker. Yeah. I could probably like chat with you and Andrea about this stuff some other time. But lessons yeah. learned about all this stuff because um, it's yeah, that's it's you just want something stable that it doesn't keep you up at night. It, and and WordPress is not it. It's just um, it's a it's a real mess. Um, yeah. Wow, the time has just flown by. Let me um, let me pull up a couple more questions here that I um, so. Um, what is something that is a real challenge for you that you do? What's a real challenge for me in what I do? Uh, it's probably saying no. Yeah. <laughs> Andrea and I both have that same problem. We don't want to say no, but, you know, we are in, increasingly getting more stuff to do, more opportunities, and it's hard to say no. But what we try to do, though, is... Um, try to find ways to get that support to help that client or whoever. And, um, you know, that's 
that's the benefit of working with a, a great community like ID Lance is having that network. Yeah. Uh, but it is so hard to say mm -hmm. no. I mean, there are a couple of instances where you have to say no. Right, right, right. I did right. all like working with that person. <laughs> um, and and for you, like for what you do now, how do you stay on top of your own professional development? Um, yeah, that's that's a good question. Um, I think through the pandemic, uh, I think you know we had the opportunity to kind of uh, participate in a lot of webinars or or uh, at least um, you know even just going through the LinkedIn feeds. You know, people put some really good things out there. You click on the links, and they like short little bits of wisdom or tips, uh, which I think you know, in LinkedIn alone, in the last couple of years, it's just blossomed with opportunities for professional development. I mean, we've got some really great talent out there. People putting out some, you know, great infographics, mm -hmm. uh, videos, um, storyline samples things like that. Uh -huh. So uh, that's, that's a good way to do it. Now, I personally would like to get back into going to conferences, probably starting this fall and into next year. Um, now that we're emerging from the pandemic, as people have, I guess, uh, are feeling safer and they're getting out there, you know, uh, to participate. So I look forward to that. Yeah, yeah, no, that's good. Um, Excellent. Yeah, I, uh, I'm not sure. I'm hoping. I'm thinking. Still trying to consider whether or not I'm going to throw a live event next year because I've done three so far for TLDC. But um, cool. Yeah, I um, I'm still. It's still a little risky, and I, I'm not trying to produce any big ones. I just like to keep them on the smaller side. But it's still. Um, I don't want to make that choice of having to invite people out to a risky environment. So um, I'm kind of yeah. risk averse in that way. Um, so last question, if you weren't doing instructional design, ID lands, any of that stuff, anywhere in L and D, what would you be doing instead? If I was doing instructional design, Oh, not doing it. If there was, if, if, the, if you weren't an L and D professional, what do you think? What would you be? Oh, if I wasn't, Oh, probably. I mean, you know, I started out as mechanical engineer. I probably would revert to that. I yeah. would stay with that. Um, I do mean, you do anything? Do you do anything now that's related to engineering on the side, like hobbies or anything like that? No, 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 no time. <laughs> no, but uh, but in a, in a in a different way, yes. I, I will take that back. Um, one of my clients that I'm working with now. Um, manufacturers uh, circuits you know they they, they do uh, silicon chips and things like that and i work with a uh, a lot of electrical engineers so even though i'm not an ee uh, i'm an me um it's same kind of shop talk okay so you know it nice. is it, it's very familiar territory yeah okay and very cool yeah, and I could still, you know, look at their diagram and, and you know, their technical material and at least um, sound somewhat intelligent about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Parker, I love talking to you. I think it, I'm so glad that, you know, I want to thank you too. I forgot to thank you for um, helping sponsor um, that e-learning tool summit that we did Our last pleasure. month. Our pleasure, yeah. That was really kind of you to, to help support that. And yep. um, yeah, I can tell you as far as like L and D is concerned, um, you're definitely you and Andrea are, are like some of the good guys in this space. And it's, so it's a pleasure to be able to, to talk to you and work with you. And, um, if you ever have any questions, anything at all, like, especially on the community side of things, um, just send me an email. I have gone through all that stuff. And that's kind of my background is I have always been the person that played with toys, you know, back when I was working at the guild and all that stuff, that was the, Always the one that was like, yeah, you know, the, the I think you stuff. and I will be talking a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let me know. I'm happy. I'm always finding new stuff too. So, um, yeah. you know, yeah, just keep in touch and, and thank you so much for, um, supporting TLDC with your membership and you guys have any, anything coming up for ID lands that people should know about? Uh, well, we do have something big coming later this year. We won't mm -hmm. announce it yet. 
but mm -hmm. it's going to be um, a little bit of a game changer. So we're excited mm -hmm. about that. Uh, I hate to leave it as a teaser, but I have to leave it as okay. a teaser. Sorry. That works. Everyone but can just... It's, it's IDLance.com, right? IDLance.com. Yeah. Yeah. And then everybody, June 23rd and 24th, we're having the um, Accessible and Inclusive Design Conference that we're hosting. Um, I don't have the landing page up yet, but keep an eye on that. It's it's free and we're going to have two days worth of sessions all talking about accessible and inclusive design, super important. And last year we had over, I think, 1200 registrants for that one. So this year it'll be big too. And it's just so valuable um, to know and um, great for our industry if we all can build um, inclusivity into what we do. And with that, I'm going to wrap it up. Thanks again, Parker. Um, you know, good luck with Thank ideas. You, yeah. Really if you need it. Absolutely. All right. Bye, bye everybody. Thanks a lot.